O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What a beautiful psalm of worship. Psalm 8 that David sings out the praises of God, all of beautiful creation surrounding him. You know, worship puts us in a posture of prayer. They, they weave together like a beautiful tapestry, one being the other. In the Middle Ages, it wasn't uncommon for a commoner to come before a great lord or a king and say, privy your worship. It places that person in a position before someone who can respond, who can have the power to enact judgment or to give compassion or justice. In the same way as we approach God in worship and pray and lift our supplication up to Him, we are appealing to the fact that He is good, that He has the power to do things, and that He's compassionate enough to do them. That's easy in a situation where we find ourselves surrounded by God's beautiful creation, as David writes about. Sometimes it's not so easy. Some of our very real situations that we find ourselves in are difficult and may cause us to lower our heads and not lift them. Prayer and worship is maybe not the first thing that we, we gravitate towards. It reminds me of sailing. I like to sail a lot and, and um, often new sailors and even old sailors as the boat heels over under the pressure and power of the wind, their tendency is to pull harder on that main sheet. But that actually just makes the situation worse. In reality, they need to let go of it slightly and allow the ship to maintain its course. You know, sometimes, although we may not feel like worshiping and engaging in prayer in the situations in our life that are tough, that's the exact position that we need to find ourselves in. Paul and Silas, when they were in stocks and in jail, instead of commiserating and crying and moaning about their situation, turned their faces to heaven and worshiped. In whatever situation that you find yourself in, can I encourage you to worship, to lift your heart to God. And if you need reason, let's reflect on David's reasons. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? Father God, that you would come and dwell with us. Thank you, Father, that you have given us all sorts of reasons to worship you. Not only your creation, but the fact that you are mindful of your creation. Father, would you help us cultivate that heart of worship in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. Jesus, meet with us.